If you're trying to add a simple and secure sign-in method for your application, then this video is for you. So I was trying to do the same thing recently for an app that I'm making on this channel. And I, I discovered something called Firebase UI, which is an amazing, simple plug and play SDK to do exactly this. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to implement the Google and email authentication methods for your app using a basic React application as a demo. My name is Hakim and I'm a web fee engineer at eBay. And my mission is to teach you full stack development using the latest technologies. First of all, make sure you have a Firebase account set up. So I've already signed in here. If you haven't done it, it takes literally five seconds to do. Uh, once you've done that, head over to the console and add a new project. So we're gonna call this React Auth 2. And then disable that, create project. And it's gonna spin up a bunch of services in the background because uh, this is all hosted on Google Cloud. Firebase is a really quick and easy way to spin up an application that uses Google Cloud infrastructure. So you don't have to manage any of the actual infrastructure yourself. It's all hosted and managed for you. All right, let's click continue. Sweet, and because we're doing a web application or React app, let's click on web. Uh, let's call this again, React Auth 2. We, do we, mm, we don't wanna set up Firebase hosting. It's not necessary for now. Let's register the app. So now we're gonna leave this screen up here. Let's head over to the terminal and let's run a couple commands to set up our React application. Okay, so, oh. Okay, so in your terminal, um, which on Mac is by just doing command space, and then you type in terminal and it opens the terminal. On Windows, it's a different command, but in your terminal, simply paste in this command, so npm create v at latest. This will spin up a new React application. Uh, we're gonna call it again, React Auth2. We're gonna select React. TypeScript, and then we're gonna CD into it, so React Auth2, and open up our Visual Studio Code, code dot. Perfect, and close that. In your code editor's terminal, um, simply paste in this here. So we're gonna install Firebase, Firebase UI, and also React Router to demonstrate the redirect functionality that you get with Firebase UI after a user has successfully authenticated themselves. So let's hit enter, run npm run dev, and let's head over to the local host. Okay, so we have our beautiful React application set up. Now let's go over back to our Firebase console and copy this configuration here. And in our source folder, Let's create a new file called firebase.ts, paste it in and export this app constant here. Now you don't need to worry about anything else in this file. The only thing we care about is this app constant here that's been exported because we will need this in just a moment. The next thing I wanna do is head over to app.tsx, just delete everything in here. So literally let's just wipe this. Just delete everything in here. And I'm instead gonna use the React Router that I just added. So let's wrap all of this in a return. I'm gonna use Browser Router. And that's all we're gonna have for now. Let's create a new file called Login. And another one called Home, whoops. And another one called home. Let's export these functions now. So export default function. Yep, home. And then just return this for now. And same in login. Cool. And then in our browser router here, we're gonna use the import the routes 
which it saves, so it formats correctly. We'll need to import another route. It's kind of confusing, I know, but just how the syntax is. So, so real quick, the syntax for this is a path name, which is just a slash. And then after that, an element, so which React element you wanna render. And for our first one, we're gonna use the navigate component and pass the replace to equals oops, slash home. And don't worry, you'll see what this means in just a moment. And slash there. And our next route, we will have home. And the element will be, of course, home. And the same thing for login. So just login. Sweet. So this is our basic routing. So whenever someone comes to the default slash, they get navigated to home. And then in home, we're gonna to check to see if they're already authenticated. If they're not authenticated, they'll get redirected again to the login page where they'll need to authenticate themselves. Okay, so in our login component, I'm gonna paste in some code now, which is simply going to uh, log in a user via Google or email. Now, I'm gonna explain each line because it does get quite confusing, especially with all these different versions of Firebase. So at the start here, we are importing use effect, which is just a function that we're using to invoke whenever this component is rendered. And then we have a get auth method, which gets the auth instance or the auth SDK to check whether or not the user is signed in to your application. And then after that, we're importing the Firebase namespace, which is um, from the compatibility version, a namespace that works with older versions of Firebase. And below that, we have the Firebase UI, which is another namespace or module that we're using specifically for the user interface where they're gonna log in. Uh, we're importing the CSS from the CDN, and we're also importing the app from the configuration file we just made. Now, in the use effect is where we either get the current instance of the authenticated app, or we create a new one and pass through that configuration file we just made into the uh, auth UI constructor here. And in the next line, we are actually creating the UI. So what we're doing here is, again, this is why TypeScript is so good, is, oh, let me just leave that there. In this, set, in this first parameter, we're passing through a string, which in this case is just a CSS ID. And in the second in, uh, parameter, we're passing through the configuration object itself, which I'll include the docs in the description below, but it shows you uh, all the different ways you can authenticate a user. Now, we have our Firebase UI auth container, which we're passing through to this div down here, so it actually renders a UI. And in the object here, we have our signing success URL, which is where we're gonna redirect the user to the home page after a successful login. And then the sign-in options here, so, as you can see, um, we have the Firebase Google Auth provider here. And this is my client ID for this instance. Actually, this is for a different application, so please don't hack it. But uh, this is how you set up the sign-in options for the Google sign-in method. And I'll show you how to do that right now. Uh, the second part is the email auth provider, which is just you pass through this uh, flag here and nothing else. And there's also an anonymous auth provider, which I will leave for another video because that one is very special. And this credential helper option here is what enables you to auto sign in when you use the uh, Google one tap sign in method. So that's that, let's hit save. 
Um, what I'm going to do right now actually is let's host up the application real quick. So npm run dev. Let's paste this. Oh, it's already there. Wait, it's got a different port number now. Whatever. So we're here right now. Let's head over to login. As you can see, we have our two providers here. Now they're not going to work yet because we haven't enabled them in the Firebase console. So we can do that right now. But before we do that, I do want to add in the home page first. And again, I'm going to paste in some code just so we can get to the point sooner. So let's paste this in. So we have our navigate function here, which is again using the React router, which will redirect the user to the login page. We have a user state variable here, which just checks whether or not they've logged in. And in this use effect, we're using an onauth state changed uh, method from the auth SDK, which simply is a listener that checks to see whether or not the user is signed in or any changes in their authentication state. And then after that, we can actually unsubscribe whenever the component unmounts, but that doesn't matter for this tutorial. Um, below this, we have another function where we're gonna allow the user to sign out. So in other words, this component only gets rendered if they're authenticated. Let's hit save. Let's head over to the console again. Oh, sorry, I'm in the app. Let's head over to the root. Cool. So as you can see, it redirected me to the login page. So if I try that again, if I try to navigate to the root path, it's actually going to redirect me to the login, which it should. And now I can demonstrate to you how this will all work. So if I click sign in with Google, it's going to say, hey, this doesn't work. If I try it with email, let's try uh, web we made. Hey, it doesn't work either. So we need to actually allow this in our Firebase console. So let's uh, continue to the console here, click on authentication and get started. Okay, so let's enable the Google sign-in method first. So click on Google, click enable, and for the email, just select yours. Now there is one more thing you need to do in the web SDK. Oh, actually no, this will get set afterwards, my bad. So close that, hit save. The reason why that's taking long to load is because it's actually creating a, um, a setup for you in the background. So when you enable it, if we head back into the settings here, we'll have this web client ID. You need to copy this ID, head back over to the application, and in the login section, remove this, paste this in, hit save, and now your app will work with Google. But let's finish this off and do the uh, email sign in as well. So just hit save. Let's add a new provider. Click on email password, enable. Now there is another one for passwordless sign in, but we'll get to that in another video. Hit save. And it's as simple as that. So now we have Google and email uh, insured. Let's go back to our application, it's right here. And let me also clear my cache. So when you're testing this out or developing with any kind of uh, authentication flow, make sure to constantly clear your cookies. So how you do that is in your browser uh, developer tools, click on application, make this a bit bigger. And then you want to click on clear site data, but also click on including third party cookies. So click on this, let's refresh the page. Cool. Now let's click on sign in with Google. Perfect. So now we can log in with our Gmail. Cool. So now it's going to prompt me to sign in as chemo or my name of my account. Okay, current origin isn't registered with the Google OAuth client. Okay, you might see this error as well. So the given origin is not allowed for the given client ID. So it seems that we need to register this externally as well, which is super weird. So you would think that when you add in your client ID into your application, right, that it's going to just work. You would think that when you do this, it would just work, but it actually doesn't. And that's what stumped me. So what I'm going to do now is 
Google uh, API client ID setup. Okay, click on the first link here, setup authentication, and it tells you how to do it. So we're gonna to go to the API console. So this is on Google Cloud, by the way. And our application is called React Auth2. And then you wanna click on credentials here. Now, Firebase has already made us our credentials. So if you click on this, we can see that we already have our uh, client ID, which matches the one we have. You'll see these list of URLs that are authorized and also the redirect as well. So you want to add these into the um, application. Actually, I think I need to add in our current one as well. For some reason, you have to be super specific with the port number as well. So let me add that in, hit save. Let's test this out. And there we go. So now we're signed in. That works. We can see my name, my email. That's all good. Let's sign out. Let's oh, see. It will automatically do that. And you can disable that by doing. So the way you disable that is by getting rid of this. So this will remove the automatic sign up. But Typically, you'd want this for your user experience, right? So we'll leave that as it is. Now let's look at the email setup. So I'm going to just hit save there. I don't know why it wasn't saved. And I'm going to clear my cache. Clear, clear site data. And let's sign in with email. So let's make an email called test123 at test.com. Pick a name, test, and the password will be test12345. Okay, great. So now we're signed in with our test account. Cool. Now, here's the problem. If I try to sign out and sign in again with the same email, so test123, watch what happens. It tries to sign me up again. And the reason for that is because Google made a breaking change recently. Uh, where they don't want to allow something called email enumeration attacks. So the way you solve that is by heading over to the Firebase console again. Yeah, and then head over to your settings and you want to click on user actions. You'll see this ticked option at the bottom here called email enumeration protection. Again, this is a recent breaking change. So if you want to enable email sign-in using Firebase UI, you have to disable this, hit save, and if you head back to the application, let's just refresh this, sign in with email, or oh, oh, cancel that, sign in with email, so test one, two, three, hit next, now it works. So our password was test one, two, three, four, five, sign in, and there we go. <laughs> change your password, funny. Okay, and in Firebase, you can also see your users. If you click on the users tab, you can see that who signed in, uh, how they signed in. Now this code will be available on GitHub. So if you get stuck or you want to just copy and paste it in, feel free. Um, and there are other methods that you can use, such as Twitter, Facebook, um, anonymous sign-in, which I'll dive into in a future video. Now, make sure to comment any issues or questions you have in the comment section below. I really want to know what you're struggling with, any questions you have, and I'll do my best to help you out. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.